Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for those of you on the telephone, this is County Executive Mark Molinaro. You're on live uh, with our telephone uh, town hall and Facebook Live town hall. Uh, we're um, going to try to get you updated this evening. If you're on the telephone line now, you can dial zero. Uh, we're calling uh, thousands of your neighbors across Dutchess County. It takes a little while to get all of those calls in, but uh, again, uh, we want to welcome you uh, to participating this evening. We're streaming live on Facebook, so if you're on the phone and you have a question, dial zero. We'll get you into the queue. Uh, you're going to be asked to record that question, but when we call you up for to ask ask the question, you'll be live uh, speaking with us. If you're following us on Facebook uh, this evening and you have a question, please write it in the comment section below the live stream. Uh, we'll uh, be with you for an hour uh, tonight. Uh, so again, I uh, want to thank you uh, for joining us. On the call this evening is, uh, as uh, we've had uh, these last uh, several times, uh, Dr. Neil Wythian. Dr. Wythian is an infectious disease doctor and Dutchess County's uh, Commissioner uh, of the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. He's on the phone this evening, as is Assistant County Executive Ron Hicks. Uh, Ron has been steering our economic development efforts, working directly with businesses across uh, Dutchess County, uh, and uh, has uh, been uh, involved in many of the control room calls with the governor's staff. Uh, additionally, Deputy Commissioner for the Department of Emergency Response, Ken Roman. Uh, we've asked Ken to be on uh, this evening. Ken is working with Sheriff Butch Anderson and Under Sheriff Kirk and Parati, uh, steering our collaborative effort to support um, local law enforcement, uh, sort of refocusing on uh, policy enhancements and uh, addressing concerns within law enforcement. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, this evening. If you get disconnected tonight, uh, if you are on the telephone, uh, you simply need to dial again, 845-765-7121, 845-765-7121, if you're disconnected. And again, if you have a question, uh, dial zero. Let's get right into uh, a quick update. As you know, yesterday the Mid-Hudson region began uh, what the state refers to as uh, phase three. Uh, all of New York except the uh, city of New York have advanced now to phase three. Uh, phase three included uh, expansion uh, and inclusion of indoor dining at restaurants at 50% uh, customer capacity, uh, along with uh, personal care businesses, uh, including massage, uh, spa, nails, tanning, uh, tattoos, etc. So all of that um, is, is now underway. Uh, we uh, especially uh, want to thank uh, those businesses who uh, quite frankly, have been devastated by these last 100 days, uh, but also have sacrificed uh, in so many ways. So as we've said, uh, please make every effort to support local businesses uh, as they reopen. Uh, we've done some really interesting things with uh, restaurants and expanded outdoor capacity. We can certainly talk a little bit about that, uh, but let's uh, get uh, updated. Um, so uh, as you uh, know, uh, uh, the state has identified these phases. As I said, we're now in phase three. Uh, we are expected to advance to phase four on or about July the 7th. That's Tuesday, July the 7th. Phase four uh, has gotten um, uh, a bit confusing. Uh, as uh, yesterday, uh, the governor made some announcements that, uh, quite frankly, upended uh, what uh, we thought was uh, the next several steps. Uh, now, the good news for Duchess and the Mid-Hudson region is that we were not advancing to phase four until July 7th. So some of what was announced yesterday doesn't yet affect us. Uh, however, it does affect other counties across the state and uh, unfortunately has created a bit, uh, uh, well, it's created confusion. Uh, and it's not unfortunate, it's almost by design. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, this evening. So phase four for us begins on uh, July the 7th. We are advocating for advancing that to the 4th of July weekend. We think that, quite frankly, now uh, with the language the state issued yesterday, there's even less of a risk. Uh, for us to advance uh, phase four businesses uh, to July the 4th and would benefit from that weekend, uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, if you have a question, dial zero on the phone or type it in uh, in the comment section below the live stream. Phase four, uh, again, uh, includes uh, uh, higher education, uh, low risk uh, indoor uh, and outdoor uh, art and entertainment activities. Uh, and uh, uh, film and, and television production, uh, which is an important business. But uh, that said, uh, as you know, um, uh, yesterday uh, the, the governor announced uh, uh, a delay in businesses that we thought uh, were uh, included in phase four. Uh, today, uh, the governor announced uh, travel restrictions and, and a travel advisory. Uh, which goes into effect tonight at midnight. The states of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut have enacted uh, this travel advisory. Um, happy to answer questions. Uh, 
I'd be happy to answer questions about it. Uh, this travel advisory uh, has established that individuals coming from what has been deemed high infection rate locations should quarantine for 14 days, uh, and that includes anyone returning home from vacation to New York. Um, and uh, with that, apparently, comes a series of um, uh, fines. Uh, happy to answer uh, questions uh, about this, um, uh, but uh, nevertheless, that was the governor's announcement uh, today. Um, additionally, uh, 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 in phase four, uh, the capacity at houses of worship uh, increases to 33 percent. Uh, gathering capacity identified by the state, uh, social gatherings can increase to 50. Uh, and as I said, uh, the governor uh, announced yesterday that phase four, um, that, 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 that malls, movie theaters, and gyms would not necessarily begin or opening when phase four commences in the regions that it commences in today and, or tomorrow and Friday. Um, if you have questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> I, 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 uh, um, uh, well, anyway, uh, for the last 20 days, uh, the govern governor's representatives uh, have said to us at uh, our daily meetings, uh, at our request, uh, responses to questions, quite frankly, these calls get very contentious, and the response has been that malls, movie theaters, and gyms would, in fact, open in phase four. Uh, we had a call yesterday uh, with uh, senior counsel, uh, I believe, uh, with the governor. Her name is Beth Garvey. Uh, she advised uh, at region after region. In fact, um, uh, calls began early in the afternoon with uh, upstate regions and concluded with our call at 645 uh, in our region. Um, uh, I can tell you that the language they used in the morning uh, was different, earlier in the day was different than the language they used with us later in the day. We all talk, all the county leaders, uh, we try to communicate with one another. Uh, early in the day, uh, they were strident in suggesting that, uh, in fact, malls, theaters, and gyms would not open when phase four commences. Uh, I specifically uh, offered that, uh, in fact, uh, the governor's regional staff, which includes uh, uh, former county executive Mike Hine, said to us time and time again that, in fact, these businesses would open in phase four. Uh, when, when pushed on this, um, uh, and I asked uh, specifically uh, whether or not it was possible, um, or when, when this timeline would begin for these businesses, uh, Beth Garvey said to us in these calls, uh, in the call yesterday, that it was um, expected that guidance for those businesses would be issued shortly. So I, of course, asked, well, if that happens, is it possible these, these businesses could open um, when the Mid-Hudson region commences phase four? And the answer was not no. So all I will tell you is that um, it is exceptionally frustrating uh, and it is in absolutely unfair uh, to the businesses who need to prepare for these decisions uh, to be told one thing for the last three weeks, only to have that change. And what I'd offer to you is that we take seriously the public health risk, and the business community that, that is affected by these decisions is taking that seriously. Um, either for 21 days uh, they had no intention of providing uh, opportunity for these businesses to open with phase four, and they were uh, not telling the truth to us, or um, uh, they uh, made a decision based on some new data uh, as early as yesterday. In either case, quite frankly, the governor and the governor's office has to be transparent so that the business community knows uh, what is driving those decisions. And I am going to continue, as are the county leaders in this region and across the state of New York, to demand greater transparency. This is, it, it is just absolutely either, uh, it is disingenuous uh, and it is a, 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 a a gut punch to businesses who were preparing uh, for the start of reopening. So Mike asked specifically uh, on, on Facebook, why did Governor uh, Cuomo push gym openings back past phase four? The answer is, we don't know. Uh, in fact, uh, from everything uh, we've been told, uh, we, we, we don't have uh, the data to suggest anything um, uh, other than uh, they're working on it. Uh, so, um, not trying to express frustration uh, un, un, uh, unnecessarily. Uh, what I can tell you is that these businesses, most theaters, uh, gyms, um, all have engaged honestly in trying to develop protocols to be safe. Uh, if there was the feeling that those businesses could not safely open with phase four, certainly in the regions that begin phase four, uh, that ought to have been shared earlier on and there ought to have been uh, some clarity as to why that decision was being made. 
Uh, we have asked for the metrics. What is the data that drives this decision so that we can communicate it? We have not received that yet. We're going to continue to ask. Uh, Karen asks, do hairstylists still have to get tested in phase three? Uh, the answer is yes. The standard for, uh, for uh, personal care uh, businesses is that they still remain uh, they still have to be uh, tested. Isabel asked, when will malls open? Isabel, we don't know when malls will open because, again, as we said, uh, we expected that to occur in the Hudson Valley on July 7th. It is still possible, based on the conversations we had yesterday with the governor's staff, that, in fact, malls would open uh, on July 7th when the Mid-Hudson region enters Phase 4. But it was clear that they would not open when Upstate hits Phase 4. So we're going to continue to monitor that. We're going to be back with you again next, we'll be here on Friday and again next Wednesday. Uh, we'll try to give you that answer uh, when uh, they advise us. Um, uh, so um, uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. If you have a question, dial 0 on the phone. Happy to get you online. Uh, happy to answer your questions uh, as well if you simply um, write that in on the comment section. Why don't we go to Ann? Uh, Anna's in Hopewell had a question regarding outdoor recreation. Anne, go ahead. Yes, hi. Thank you for taking my two-part question. You're welcome. So this has to do, uh, this has to do with reopening um, time frames. First part, with reference to recreation sports for children, specifically soccer and lacrosse. And then the second has to do with outdoor pools of a gym that are not accessed, don't have to be accessed from the gym, such as um, the outdoor pool at All Sport. What are the anticipated um, reopenings for both of these arenas? Great, great question. So recreation right now, low and moderate risk recreation. Low and moderate includes many sports, including soccer, uh, can begin competitions uh, on July the 6th, Monday, July 6th. Soccer, youth, okay. and adult, low to moderate risk uh, recreational activities can begin on Monday, July 6th. They've been advised. I actually coached my son's soccer team. I just got the notice that said we can start, <laughs> start uh, 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 practices on the 6th of July. Uh, lacrosse okay. uh, can begin non-contact practices on July 6th, but they cannot engage in contact competition. So lacrosse can begin non-contact practice on July 6th. Soccer can begin on July 6. Um, Ron Hicks, um, uh, do you can you answer the second question regarding pools? Because I think any any pool that has external access um, can can be permitted to open. Am I am I wrong with that? That's my understanding. But you, yeah, she may have been asking a question regarding organized uh, swimming or instruction. I no. I, well, the question was um, uh, the all sport pool. Uh, I think was the specific. Yep. Can the outdoor all start pool all sport pool be open? I, the answer is yes, no? Yeah, it's our understanding it is, and, and the county health department has issued guidance for those, uh, but, but they may be restricted to some of the activities that they can do in the pool. Um, happy to follow up with uh, them directly uh, if you need me to. Okay, so um, uh, to answer that question, yeah, uh, the outdoor pools are permitted and can, um, can, can open, and the health department has been uh, issuing them. Um, uh, Leanne asked, are bank lobbies open for everyone? Banks have, have made that decision, uh, right, uh, Ron, on an individual basis. They, have, they, can, they can be open. The lobbies can be open for, for uh, customer access. Yeah, it's our understanding for, from some of the banks that have told us uh, that they're concerned about the face coverings. Uh, they're required to be worn indoors, but at the same time, they're concerned about security. So that's why they've been using uh, mostly the drive-throughs and appointments only at the time. At this time, okay. but it is up to the individual banks, is our understanding. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Um, uh, uh, Debbie asks: Are people from Pennsylvania blocked in the travel ban? Pennsylvania is included in one of the one of the states. I do not believe Pennsylvania is included in one of the states. Um, and then Debbie asks, who will make sure people from Florida will self-quarantine? The easy answer is no one. I, you know, I, I, I hate to be that blunt. The truth of the matter is there is no mechanism that the state has um, uh, created for that enforcement. So even the governor today, making it even more confusing, said on a radio interview that we, you know, we're, the state issued this guidance, these three states issued this, this guidance, um, expecting that people would would self would adhere to that expectation. So if you're traveling in from uh, any number of these high uh, infection rate states, uh, you would be expected uh, to voluntarily um, uh, self quarantine. 
Uh, there isn't a mechanism for that to be enforced in any particular way. And we have uh, Dr. Anil Wythian on the call. Dr. Wythian is our commissioner of, of health. Dr. Wythian, we wouldn't know uh, until an individual tests positive. In fact, um, you know, from our perspective, you know, I guess if you're coming here for a few weeks, um, I mean, that's kind of ironic, right? If you're going to tra travel here for a business and return home, I don't think you're staying here for 14 days. But if you're here for a period of time, we would encourage you to be tested, no? Uh, that may be uh, a good avenue uh, uh, of dealing with this. But the unfortunate thing is, if your place of residence is outside the state, there is nothing that mandates the eclair or the state laboratory reporting system to give us that information because again their residence is outside our jurisdiction we typically don't get results from other counties so if they list their address as say another state we typically don't get those results so to make things even more complicated if you're traveling in from arizona you you take a test uh, here in duchess you claim your residence is arizona that test won't, 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 even if it were positive, wouldn't necessarily be information the state of New York would have or would share with the local enforcement entity, the local county, right? That is correct. So, um, and, and just to add to, to answering the question, there just isn't a mechanism for local health departments to identify people who have traveled from out of state into state. Listen, if you've come from a high infection rate state or you believe that, even if you've traveled from New York City and you believe that you could have contracted this disease, you shouldn't travel. It's as simple as that. And then if you do, we would encourage you to, to self-quarantine. But to create a, an, enforcement an enforcement that doesn't have any infrastructure to actually uh, be enforced uh, just adds, adds confusion. And I, I will say this out loud. We are not asking residents, uh, and please do not, uh, engage in, in you know, sort of your own contact tracing. Uh, there was some comment today uh, that the governor made about, well, people would, would report others. I, we are not looking for vigilantes across Dutchess County. We've got enough to have to manage, uh, and we've encouraged people, listen, you know, don't, we want you to be kind. We don't want you taking photographs and video of people out, with or without masks. Um, we do not have the mechanism at the local level for you to send us a driver's license or somebody, you know, driving into a hotel and telling us that they came from out of state. It's just not practical or possible for us to enforce. Um, I think Anil will probably breathe a sigh of relief that I just said that. I just don't think that, that any county health department anywhere in America uh, could, could adequately enforce that kind of an order. So really, it's up to the state to do its job if it wishes to, uh, to enforce that kind of restriction. Um, let's get to some of the data points so you know where we are. Uh, as we've said over these last few weeks, we are trending in, in, in the right directions. We're grateful to residents for being considerate and doing the right thing you have. Uh, currently, um, uh, we uh, have tested over 53,000 uh, individuals, and we have a great network of testing capacity, very, uh, very important. Uh, we've identified 4,150 total positive cases over these 100 days. Uh, currently, less than 200 active cases, 183 active cases, and, and very promising. Uh, currently, only 10 individuals hospitalized uh, because of COVID-related diseases, uh, COVID-related disease here uh, here in Dutchess, and that has been progressive, moving progressively uh, downward. And and we're very grateful to you, re uh, the residents of Dutchess, uh, for uh, for for really stepping up, and and we've been able to. Um, uh, turn the, turn the curve, so you speak. It's flattened the curve, and, and we've we, we, we've been steady now uh, in holding those numbers uh, low. Uh, New York, of course, has a low infection rate. We continue to share in that success. This region and Duchess has uh, had ke has kept that infection rate low over these last uh, several uh, week or last week, uh, and that is all uh, very uh, promising. Um, uh, Ronnie is asking when, when courts starting evictions, there is a, the governor's order prohibits eviction that remains in effect. Uh, we'll keep you posted as to when and if the governor relinquishes that, um, that authority. Um, uh, Anne is asking if uh, we should plan on an additional stimulus check. You know, we can't say for certain, but we can tell you that Congress is debating state and local aid. We believe there will be state and local aid assistance. Uh, we believe that there will be additional assistance to small businesses, and we do believe that there will be additional assistance to residents. Uh, Ron Hicks, I don't want to put I want to put you on the spot. Do you do you have any uh, anything you, you you might add to what what we might expect through uh, congressional uh, debate on on small business assistance or personal uh, 
you know, personal checks or assistance? I, I you may not, so I don't want to ask you to do that if you don't. We've only we only continue to ask that they they focus on the most effective state most affected states, and of course New York being the the most affected state as at this as of this time in the nation, and that they focus on the smallest businesses, uh, and that they've learned lessons from the past distributions and how people were locked out. Um, either through the application process or because they were not a big enough business or their bank uh, only handled uh, certain customers uh, based on the federal program. So we, we've provided our federal representatives with, with enough feedback to know, um, uh, at least to be involved in the process, to ensure that the money gets to those that need it most. Uh, that's the most I could answer on that, though. No, I appreciate that. And, and so um, what we've heard from the House of Representatives and, and representatives in the Senate is that there is uh, there are ongoing uh, negotiations on a federal another federal stimulus package, which should include assistance to small businesses, should include assistance to state and local government, and likely will include assistance to individuals. Uh, we expect that Congress will act on that. Um, before their August recess. They leave for the month of, uh, pretty much the month of August, uh, at the end of July. So we expect that that will uh, be determined. Additionally, there is some, um, obviously, conversation about extending unemployment, which uh, is uh, uh, the unemployment benefit that, that Congress included in their, in, in their COVID-related bills. Uh, we'll keep you posted. We have asked, just so you know, uh, first, uh, not every member of the Dutchess County Legislature, oh, no, I, I apologize, every member of the county legislature, and um, we're uh, circulating a letter for supervisors and mayors to join, asking for the federal government to take action to assist uh, certainly local government. Uh, this county is looking um, and facing a significant budget uh, deficit, as are, as are many, uh, because of the loss in particular of sales tax revenue, but, but also the additional cost of responding uh, to, uh, to the crisis. Uh, so from, from our perspective, we need that aid, we need that assistance uh, in order to uh, protect uh, the core services that, that local government provides, and we'll continue to advocate uh, for that. Um, Ron, Liz is asking if outdoor fitness is allowed now, or do they need to wait till uh, July 6th? Uh, that, that's not an easy answer, I think, because there were, there were, uh, there were competing guidance. But go ahead, Ron Hicks. You're exactly right. There's conflicting guidance. And uh, what we've been told when we ask very specifically, particularly for the CrossFits and the, uh, a number of the other small uh, boutique uh, fitness centers, uh, who we believe can operate outdoors safely with distancing, um, which is in the best interest of the, and the health of, our, uh, of, of individuals, um, it, we've been told, no, they can't because it is considered organized. And while um, it may be something that could be safely permitted, the individual business may not be covered by their insurance because of the governor's executive order. So uh, we, we do see in the July 6th um, uh, guidance, if you will, um, that some of that instruction can continue outdoors. Um, and we expect a little bit more uh, focused guidance based on what we've submitted to Empire State Development to allow our businesses to operate, and, and of course, we're hoping that they'll do it sooner than later. Right, and 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 actually, I, I'll apologize in that we um, we thought we understood the guidance, which is why on Friday we gave direction that certain outdoor fitness activities could begin in phase three, only to have that uh, been uh, changed yet again. Uh, so uh, we do believe currently that that most of the, and there are categories, but much uh, many outdoor fitness activities uh, should be able to commence on July six. Uh, we're waiting for clarity otherwise. Uh, Amber is asking if Splashdown uh, can still open. Uh, Amber, um, this is the frustration we have. For the last three weeks, um, we have been uh, speaking with state officials. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Splashdown is, is, is one of, obviously, uh, our larger, uh, you know, sort of uh, tourism sites, recreation, amusement sites. Uh, we were advised that they would be able to open when we commence uh, Phase 4. Uh, that may still be except uh, in regions that um, are moving to phase four this week, the state is saying that um, um, uh, businesses like Splashdown cannot yet open. So um, uh, what we're uh, attempting to do is to get the state to be clear on uh, when uh, businesses like Splashdown could open uh, and what guidance is necessary. I am of the opinion that we will see guidance ahead of this region moving into phase four and it, it, would be a, a, it just would be a shame if the state moves the goalpost yet again. 
Um, so as of this moment, uh, Splashdown is functioning as if they can open on July the 7th when we enter Phase 4. I believe they should, uh, they should uh, uh, consider that. Uh, I do believe, however, that, um, uh, that the state it really is it, – it, 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 the state is obligated uh, to explain – uh, how they come to these conclusions. Quite frankly, from, from our perspective, if every municipal pool, every private pool, every public pool in, in the region, in the state of New York can open, if beaches can open, I would think a chlorine-filled uh, water park could figure out a way to manage uh, uh, in phase four. And again, you know, we've made these arguments. It's, it's not that we said early on in the, in the transition should certain businesses like this open. We said at the end of the transition cycle, these kind of businesses should open. And the fact that the goalposts have been moved again uh, is uh, just unfair and certainly uh, it demands uh, greater transparency and a response from the state. What's the metric, what's the measurement, and how you make these decisions? Jason asked specifically, can Regal Cinemas open if the Galleria does not? The answer is that the state currently is treating malls, theaters, and amusement facilities the same. So as of this second, um, again, based on the 20 days of, of, governor, uh, of the governor's representatives, uh, including the former county executive in Ulster County, Mike Hine, advising us that these businesses could open when we commence phase four. There, they should proceed as if they will, uh, and, and, and we're waiting on the state to give clarity and, and that guidance. So uh, we're hopeful that they will be able to open uh, with phase four, but upstate, when they're entering phase four this week, they're being told they can't yet. So. Um, the short answer is it's, uh, the governor's office um, has not been clear um, and has been contradictory, and we're trying to get uh, the answers uh, that we can. Um, and I'd offer, if you're watching us on Facebook, um, uh, at this point, um, you know, I, I really would encourage you to join us in expressing your frustration uh, directly uh, with the governor's office. Uh, listen, um, I am all for, as we went into this crisis, uh, being smart about decision-making. Dutchess County with Ulster closed schools and limited social gatherings weeks before New York would. In fact, we were, we were discouraged from taking action on closing schools. Uh, but we did it because we knew it was necessary at the time in order to take that action to slow uh, the transmission. As we began this reopening process, we said to the state, just be honest about it, be transparent about it so that we could advise. And little by little, that transparency um, has, uh, uh, has uh, gone away, and we're, we're being asked to give directions that are being contradicted um, uh, from day to day. So we're going to keep at it. Uh, if you have a question, dial zero. We're going to go to Carol. Uh, Carol had a question. Uh, Carol's from Statsburg. Carol, go right ahead. Uh, I wanted to know if the DMV is open. So uh, thanks for that. Um, the Department of Motor Vehicles Poughkeepsie office is open for and by appointment only. So you have to call 845-486-2388. 845-486-2388. Be patient. Uh, they have to schedule these for appointments at the Poughkeepsie office. It is expected that the Wappinger office should open on or about Monday, July the 6th. They're waiting, um, there's, as you can imagine, a backlog in, in plexiglass uh, purchasing. So to create those uh, um, barriers, they're waiting for that at the Wappinger office. And then um, from there, uh, the county clerk, Brad Kendall, will make some decisions on uh, the Millbrook office. The polling office um, has been closed indefinitely, and that's a, 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 a something we'll keep you uh, posted on as well. Um, uh, is there a new limit, asks Cynthia, Cynthia, for personal outdoor gatherings? Uh, yes, as we begin phase four, well, uh, currently the outdoor gathering limit is 25 people. Uh, as we enter phase four, the outdoor social gathering limit uh, d designed by the state is, is at 50, uh, and that would be for uh, July uh, the 7th. So, um, uh, Val has asked, we're planning on going to North Carolina for vacation. Are we allowed to come back? And this is the frustration with these announcements. Uh, there's, they give so little discretion, d direction that they become so confusing. Here, here's the deal. You can travel and you can come home. Uh, what the state is saying, however, is if you travel to one of uh, a dozen states, uh, including North Carolina, when you return, they are saying that you ought to uh, quarantine for 14 days. Uh, you can return home, uh, but they're asking that you quarantine for 14 days. You can even travel to New York uh, uh, if you don't live here, but when you get here, they're asking you to quarantine for 14 days. That is the answer uh, to, uh, to that question. Let's jump to a couple more. 
Um, let's do, uh, let's go to Keith. Keith had a question regarding houses of worship, and then I want to get through as many of these Facebook questions as possible. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, my question is that I just, can you remind me of the re worship restrictions for gatherings both inside and outside in Dutchess County? Sure. So again, all of these are state restrictions, uh, none are county specific. Uh, the houses of worship uh, by the state of New York order um, outdoor uh, you, you can still have a car-based activity, so again, uh, car-based events uh, can occur. Uh, the social gathering limit is 25 people, so currently in this, in this region, if you have any activities outside, um, you know, they're asking that you not have lar more than 25 people gathered. So again, um, you know, how, how you manage that in the house of worship is, is really up to you, but that's the outdoor and social gathering li limitation currently. In do interior uh, services uh, could uh, could have begun uh, about a week ago at 25% capacity. So uh, at 25% capacity of a house of worship, 100, 100 people, seats 100 people, you can have 25 inside. Uh, and uh, they, they ask that you not have more than 25 people gathered outdoors. Uh, when we enter phase four, uh, that limit has been increased to 33%. So um, if you have 100 people, you can have 33 inside. Uh, a house of worship. So that's the uh, limitation uh, on uh, both gatherings and uh, houses of worship. Let's uh, get quickly through. Uh, Diane asked, uh, people outside uh, businesses are waiting to get in, aren't wearing masks, or socially distancing. What can be done about that? Diane, um, let me offer to you that, um, again, um, uh, the, the guidance is that we ask you uh, to, um, to wear a face covering when social distancing is not achievable. Um, and uh, uh, however, if you're at a restaurant, again, if you're seated, there's no need to wear a, a, a face covering unless you're the server. The server has to wear a face covering. Be patient with them. It is hot out, uh, and uh, uh, believe me, they're all, they're all struggling pretty hard. Um, we're simply advising businesses and residents that if you cannot engage in phys physical distancing, we're asking you to continue to wear that face covering. The governor's order does not come with a penalty for, res for individuals wearing a face covering. So um, if one chooses not to, um, we're simply asking that you, you comply you, uh, and, and, and to the extent you can engage in the physical distancing, please do. Uh, but there is not a penalty in, involved and no law enforcement agency is going to uh, swoop in to issue a violation. Uh, they're just not uh, for, for that setting. Now remember, a restaurant or a business, um, uh, once you're on their property, if you are, uh, uh, if they have chosen to only serve customers who wear a face covering, they have that right under the law. That is enforceable under the law, and uh, the only thing is the business must co must uh, provide a reasonable accommodation for individuals who have an underlying ailment or a disability. Uh, so, if a, if a business has chosen to only serve those with face coverings, that can be enforced. Uh, and when you're on their premises, it can be enforced, um, and, and uh, we'd ask you to comply uh, because, again, the state can take action against the business uh, if that's not adhered to. So that, uh, that should answer uh, that question. Um, if you have a question um, and you're on the call, uh, again, you're on with County Executive Mark Molinaro. We're going to go to about 630 today. Uh, thank you for joining us on our telephone town hall and Facebook Live town hall. Um, uh, if you have a question, dial zero. Uh, we'll, we'd like to uh, to get to that. Uh, what I want to do, though, is, is very quickly update you on another um, uh, effort that is underway. Uh, as you likely know, um, both Governor Cuomo and President Trump uh, have signed executive orders uh, requiring uh, a review and enhancement of law enforcement practices. Uh, we in this county um, have started uh, with a really good foundation. Our law enforcement agencies, in particular, uh, the sheriff's office is nationally accredited. It has to it, it has to meet certain federal and state standards in, that include many of the training and policy requirements that uh, uh, that the president and the governor are asking law enforcement agencies in bed. So, uh, last week, uh, Sheriff Anderson. Uh, uh, the president of the Supervisors and Mayors Association and I issued a, a, a memo directly to every town, village, and city in Dutchess and every police agency in Dutchess. That memo included what was and, and is our collaborative approach to review law enforcement policy. And if you're watching on Facebook now, uh, this effort led by the sheriff uh, and uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Ken Roman, who's on the call with us, 
is an effort to work directly with every law enforcement agency in Dutchess County to review policies and practices to ensure they meet the expectations of the governor of the governor's executive order and the president's uh, executive order, uh, but also the public's expectation and our hope and desire that we're constantly reviewing the way we do business to improve. The good news is that that many of our police agencies in this county uh, are trained uh, in crisis intervention training, mental health first aid. Uh, uh, cultural competency. These are things that this county and its police agencies uh, initiated several years ago because we believe in giving police officers the tools to help de-escalate, to not necessarily turn to uh, uh, unnecessary levels of force. Um, Ken Roman, uh, while you're on the call, could you just explain uh, what occurred today and, and what the police agencies have, uh, what their response has been to this effort? This is, this is a collaborative approach with all the appropriate stakeholders, we have a great structure in place, and we are going full speed ahead uh, to support law enforcement in its effort to to really look internally and to meet the public's expectation, the demand uh, that we are ensuring everyone, regardless of race, color, and creed, is protected both by policy and practice uh, here in Dutchess County. Ken, do you want to explain a little bit of what we're doing? Um, surely. Thank you very much, uh, County Executive Molinaro. As you've already mentioned, um, this is a process that has been undergoing uh, for, I'd say, the last at least five to ten years, depending on what agency, but uh, specifically the large police agencies that are accredited in Dutchess County have been working towards this for quite some time. Um, since this uh, order was put out by the uh, governor and since the uh, second order was put out by the president, um, we've been in constant conversation with uh, both the sheriff's office and the Chiefs of Police Association to make sure that we are way ahead of any other county, way ahead of the, uh, the requirements that are being put forth by the state. Um, I'm being told that uh, apparently we are probably the only county that is trying to do this collaboratively so that we can uh, provide something that's uh, uniform across the county and uh, everyone is going to be involved in it. It is, as you mentioned, a collaboration. We're going to be uh, involving various stakeholders throughout the, uh, the entire county. Um, we're gonna involve, obviously, the Criminal Justice Council, the Chiefs of Police Association, uh, various uh, different uh, organizations uh, within the Criminal Justice Council that are all considered stakeholders by the governor's office, at least. Um, to, to partake with us in, uh, in developing these policies and procedures and uh, to hopefully put forth something that uh, everybody can sign off on and everyone can agree upon. Um, but as you've mentioned, most of these are already in place. And if anything, they might need to be tweaked a little bit. But the truth of the matter is that Dutchess County, um, I truly believe, is way ahead of uh, most areas throughout New York State. And I'm very proud to have uh, been a, a member of law enforcement in New York, in Dutchess County, specifically for over 32 years. And uh, I really am very proud that uh, our county executive and the Chiefs Association in Dutchess County, um, spearheaded by the Sheriff Butch Anderson and his staff, all his uh, fine staff that are all working on this, I think we're, uh, we're going to be a model for the state of New York, and uh, I'm really happy to be part of this effort. I appreciate that, Ken. And, and Ken um, uh, has uh, spent much of his professional career in uh, handling uh, training of this nature. So, um, you know, this is all hands on deck. Uh, law enforcement throughout Dutchess uh, has been embracing this uh, really for years. But 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 this effort, we, we all know this the, the, the seriousness of ensuring that we are implementing the best policies and the best practices and that everyone, regardless of, as I said, race, color, or creed, has the, the full protection of the law and there's no assumption uh, there's, there's no judgment uh, that's that's being uh, being made. And so, again, from um, uh, implicit bias training, which uh, the city of Poughkeepsie has uh, engaged to a degree in, uh, ensuring that every agency participates in that, to to use of force and the continuum of force, um, we, we just start from a different place. And, and without suggesting that any other county is, is, is behind, we, we started this about four years ago. Uh, we, we committed, we paid for uh, and in fact, we subsidized police agencies to ensure that they had the crisis intervention, the mental health, health first aid, and the de-escalation training. And, and that was a commitment we made because we understand the need to divert people um, who may have mental illness or mental health concerns from the criminal justice system to a care system. And our mental health structure is is comprehensive. I, I, you know, Interestingly, uh, President Trump's exe executive order includes linking law enforcement with mental health providers. Well, uh, we've been doing it for the last uh, four years or six years now. 
uh, whether it's the Beat Patrol in the city of Poughkeepsie linking mental health providers with the city of Poughkeepsie Police Department or our network of mental health services, uh, a stabilization center and others, we make that direct connection. But we recognize that now is a critical moment. Uh, I am so very happy that Sheriff Anderson and the Sheriff's Office has taken the lead. The police agencies and their police chiefs in particular are, are really earnestly committed to doing this. And we're, we're going to have this collaborative approach uh, Ken referenced the Criminal Justice Council. It is a co it, it, this has been in existence since the 1990s here in Dutchess. It brings together stakeholders from all aspects of the criminal justice system, from uh, formerly incarcerated to public defenders to district attorney, all of those stakeholders around the table, mental health, social work, uh, trying to create a good, uh, a, a good uh, you know, balance, if you will. Uh, and this county, I think, starts from a, a really good foundation. But we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to do it aggressively. We're going to do it collaboratively. And every police agency has signed on. Every supervisor and mayor has signed on. And we're going to do it right. So, Ken, thanks for that. If there are questions, I'll send them your way. Let's answer a handful of other questions. Lori's asking about uh, will Dutchess Community College open? Uh, there are guidances today uh, that were issued for secondary education. Colleges and universities uh, can reopen. It is expected that Dutchess will reopen with certain safety uh, precautions. Karen asks about schools reopening in September. Uh, Anil, um, why the end? Uh, you know, we're, I know that districts are um, sort of uh, polling, if you will, their, re their, their students and otherwise. Um, you know, so families asking what they should expect. As of this moment, we expect that schools will open likely with certain restrictions. But what, you know, what from your perspective are the kinds of things people may want to be prepared for? Uh, Mark, that's a, that's, that's a very good question. I, I think there's a lot of unknowns that we still have to get through. Uh, so some of the things that, uh, that they have to work out is some of the mitigation steps that have been effective to date in the state, how do we, uh, you know, really make them operationalized within the school setting? Uh, class size, you know, whether they're going to use partitions, how are screenings going to be done, uh, how are individuals, especially in this population, that tend to have a lot of, of kids who may have very minimal, if not any symptoms, if they have COVID at all, uh, how are these things going to be monitored and assessed? So there's a lot of unknowns that need, need to be sort of answered before we take the next step. But as you mentioned, I think, it, you know, this is something that needs to be done. I think school should start and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we could be part of the process in, 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 in uh, clearing the way. Uh, thanks for that. And that, I mean, that is our that our hope, our hope and expectation. I would expect, or we would expect, some modifications. But it, it does seem possible that schools could re return in a in a sort of normal fashion with with certain precautions. Uh, but again, the state Department of Education, the governor's office, and school districts are working toward that. We'll keep you updated. Uh, and we're trying to inform the decision making. We just are not the entity. This county level is not the entity that makes that uh, decision. A lot of people were asking about visitation at nursing homes, and there has been no indication that uh, visitation uh, will will uh, the lack uh, the uh, lack of visitation or no visitation will will, will change in the immediacy. Uh, now remember, nursing homes are not regulated by county governments. They're regulated by the state. Uh, and um, at this point, nursing homes are quite frightened, I think. Uh, they're, they're concerned about opening the doors, if you will, uh, even the slightest. But again, we, there is no indication um, by the state that, that visitation is changing uh, any time in the immediacy. Anil, do you want to add to that carefully in any way? I, I will. I, I think one of the things that, you know, through your initiative and your guidance, when we looked at our our nursing homes, 13 nursing homes, and we did testing of, of the individuals there, we were quite surprised that, again, the asymptomatic positives were quite low. And again, I, I, I won't venture to guess, but again, if we had to assume uh, some of the steps and the mitigation steps that were instituted very early was probably the, the, the contributors of the low positivity rate. And so part of the mitigation steps includes the visitation policy. So while I can't say absolutely this was, was the, the biggest contributor, uh, it was, uh, had a part to play in terms of making 
sure that, you know, uh, the virus was not introduced into this vulnerable setting. Thank you, uh, Anil. Uh, Ron Hicks, uh, Diane asked, what about indoor weddings and how many people are going to be allowed? I love asking Ron Hicks this question because it has been uh, something that we have asked over and over again. You know, I, I will say out loud, if a restaurant can, could, could house 50% 50, uh, 50 capacity, couldn't, couldn't you get, um, you know, an event venue at 50% capacity? But go ahead, Ron, what do we know about weddings? Yeah, well, uh, my answer isn't going to make any sense because that's what we've gotten from the state, uh, something that doesn't make any sense. As you just articulated, you, you, you can allow 20, 30, 40 people to, to dine in a restaurant or maybe in a, in a tent outdoors, but it can't be done in an organized manner at this moment. So we, we haven't been given guidance on events yet. Um, that, that detail has not been put down. They did say that they were going to be getting to us soon. We have, unfortunately, a lot of businesses in our community that are relying on, on this type of business, and these aren't something that you go to the next day. You, you need to book these months in advance. And so we've been pressing hard for this answer, but at this moment, we just don't have that information. I would, if you had to plan, I would expect that um, you should consider reduced capacity so if event venue were going to be able to hold 500, you know, you, you'd look at uh, doing something at a, at a fraction, if not half that. Um, and then uh, thinking of what is being done at those events, like weddings, uh, the interactions, uh, they're obviously going to have to be mitigated. Um, so uh, there may not be dancing. Um, they, uh, there, there would certainly have to be social distancing. So we'll have to wait until, see, until we see the guidance, but we are pushing for that every day, too. Yeah. No, thanks for that. Um... Why don't we go to uh, Kathy is on the line. Kathy had a question regarding uh, public transit. And if you do have a question, dial zero on the phone. We'll try to get to you a few more minutes. Kathy, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if the Dutchess County loop system is going to con continue for a while longer, the same day service for seniors? Well, we're not going to leave you stranded, I can tell you that. Uh, public transit will continue to operate. Uh, you'll continue to have access uh, to... Uh, senior services, so uh, I don't want to assume that, that you're a senior, but someone near you may. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll, we're, we're not going to leave you stranded, so the system will continue uh, currently as I you have likely to tell know. You, yeah. um, you should be very proud of that department because every bus driver that I've met has been nicer and more helpful than the one before. And the women that staff the office, especially Deborah, they are just angels. Are you related to Deborah? No, not at all. I, I just wanted I to check. Work, I fell over. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, I will tell you that uh, that not only at Transit, but but really all of uh, the public face of, of Dutchess County government. Um, you know, obviously, many people um, have obviously come to us frustrated, and whether it's uh, Deborah at <laughs> Transit or the DMV clerks or anyone anywhere in county government, we've been very sensitive to the fact that that. This is a very challenging time, and uh, we, we know that when people come to us, uh, it's not always because they want to, and so we're trying to be helpful. Thank you for that. Public transit will remain. Uh, we have not reinstated uh, the fare schedule yet for, uh, for the, the regular transit system um, and those regular routes, and the senior transit will, uh, will absolutely uh, continue. Why don't we go to Joe? Joe had a question regarding contact tracers. Joe, if you're there. Yeah, I am. Go ahead, Joe. Hi, good evening. Good evening. I, I, read, some, I read some time ago that there would be a, uh, a contact tracing initiative in Dutchess County. Is that so, and is there a timeline for that? Yeah, so um, not only – so first, um, uh, contact tracing is something that we've done uh, for, in fact, generations, dating back to the, the days of polio, and in particular – uh, the county governments are responsible for public health. We, we've been doing contact tracing, uh, most notably for any, any sort of broad infectious disease, but also, uh, well, any infectious disease with, with some regularity with those related to, to STDs, right? So we, 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 this is sort of embedded in public health. Um, as part of monitoring cases uh, of COVID, we have had to expand our, our contact tracing capacity. Every county in New York has, has achieved this goal. Uh, we were expected uh, to have some 250, 260 contact tracers. I believe we actually, between employees and volunteers, have about 360 contact tracers, and we engage in that activity. Uh, Anil Wythian uh, is our Commissioner of Health. Anil, do you want to talk a little bit about how that works? This is not intrusive. In fact, we've been uh, very, uh, very careful in, in how we conduct this business, but 
Um, it's, it's actually important because it, just as with the governor's announcement regarding travel, uh, we really don't know cases until they test positive, which is why testing makes sense. And, and I will say this. Um, uh, the federal government has talked about uh, uh, reducing its, its federal commitment to testing. That is a mistake. Uh, uh, testing is, especially by choice, testing is uh, an indication for us in a way by which we can monitor um, uh, the, the, the transmission of the disease. And, uh, and, and by having access to a, a large and broad array of testing, not only are we monitoring for data purposes, but you're able to identify easily whether or not you've contracted the disease and make a decision. But Anil, wh what happens? Somebody tests positive and then what? <laughs> Mark, that was very well said. Uh, so whenever we get a result of a communicable uh, and reportable disease, uh, we basically confirm that by doing an interview. And that interview is us reaching out to that individual to know that if they know their status, finding out details in terms of what type of exposures may have been led to that, uh, that case. And the other thing is if it's communicable, we like to know what other individuals may have potentially been exposed. Uh, with COVID, we know that individuals who have the disease can be infectious for a while, so we want to reinforce and educate that individual to make sure that they are self-isolating and not exposing others. And so when we find out all those that may have potentially exposed, we may reach out to them and and sort of talk and educate them about self-quarantining so that they may not become symptomatic and symptomatic asymptomatically and potentially can spread the disease. So contact tracing, as you mentioned, Mark, has, is one of the core public health function. And for COVID, we've sort of ramped it up and put it on steroids because we're dealing with hundreds and thousands of cases w throughout the, the, the state, as well as hundreds of cases within the county. And luckily, with cases coming down low, we're doing it in a very methodical manner now. Thank you for that. Uh, we had a few questions regarding uh, visitation at uh, residences and organizations with in, uh, individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities. As you know, that we, we were successful in getting the state to authorize visitation uh, with certain precautions. Uh, organizations and residences can have visitation. Now, uh, again, there, there would be certain precautions and, um, and, 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 and every organization can make those decisions, but universally, um, uh, uh, universally, uh, the, um, uh, uh, these these organizations get to make certain certain choices. So uh, again, the, the order was issued. Uh, visitation can can commence. It, com uh, it was uh, enable, uh, enabled a week ago. We're grateful for that. Uh, you've got to work with the organization that sponsors uh, the residents, and, and we're hopeful uh, that uh, that they are taking steps to make sure visitation uh, is possible. We also in this county have permitted now. Um, uh, we're we're moving forward with special education early intervention services. Uh, we're permitting those things to occur in person uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So the screening and all of that process for early intervention services can, uh, has commenced, and our Department of Behavioral and Community Health um, uh, is moving forward to supporting those providers in providing uh, those uh, services. Um, Natalie is asking, tomorrow her daughter graduates from FDR. Congratulations. Um, and why can't we sit outside our cars for graduation when I could sit outside for a drive-in movie? Um, the short answer is the state of New York has said so. Um, that is, uh, car-based graduations are to remain, individuals remain in cars, except uh, we, we have permitted uh, and, and we've explained that um, uh, you can have 150 students participate in the in-person ca capacity, right? They could, they could potentially sit in a seat, socially distance, cross the stage, but then the observers, the spectators, have to remain in their vehicles. Uh, although, again, um, you know, I will offer to you that, that our guidance has been that, you know, getting out to stretch your legs and things of that nature, not a problem, um, but the state is saying you must remain in the vehicle. Ron Hicks, did I explain that right? You got it. Yeah, uh, it is the state of New York uh, direction. Uh, that's that's why. And uh, school districts are governed by the state of New York. The drive-in theaters uh, are obviously uh, would would be concerned about their own insurance and what have you. So uh, we'd ask you to comply. Uh, we'd ask you to manage that to the extent uh, that you can. We're uh, we're 
uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, but we have been providing direct support to school districts. Uh, when you get to the drive-in tomorrow, you're going to see lights and message boards. That's all organized in part by the Department of Emergency Response. Ken Roman, in fact, is the person uh, with uh, Bill Beal and uh, Dana Smith at the department who have been coordinating uh, those activities. So uh, we're, we're trying to be as helpful as we can. We're living within this uh, strict state structure. Uh, Yvette asked, is Department of Community and Family Services open? Yes, but uh, by appointment, so please call ahead. Schedule that appointment and you can come on in, but they are open and we've been providing those services uh, all along. Uh, let me uh, very quickly end uh, our, uh, by reminding you about um, uh, our 4th of July celebration, Duchess Goes Renegade. Uh, we are partnering to bring uh, three simultaneous fireworks displays throughout Dutchess County, one at Dutchess Stadium in Fishkill, one at uh, Silo Ridge, outside of Silo Ridge in the town of Amini off Route 22, and one at the Dutchess uh, Fairgrounds uh, in Rhinebeck. So on the 4th of July, we're going to take this opportunity to celebrate that, uh, that radical thing uh, that uh, the people of this country did, those first renegades declaring independence. Uh, and, um, and actually making a promise, uh, quite frankly, that this country every day of its existence has struggled to achieve, which is uh, that certain rights are inalienable, uh, that uh, all uh, are endowed uh, with, those, with those rights uh, and are, ought to be protected by government. We are going to celebrate Independence Day here in Dutchess on the 4th of July. Uh, gates open at those locations at 7.30 p.m. Fireworks begin at 9.30. We're grateful to our sponsors at iHeartMedia. Simulcast, you'll be able to listen to patriotic music, uh, and they'll be on-site simulcasting for, uh, from uh, several of the radio stations. Additionally, our friends at Central Hudson Gas and Electric, we're grateful for their sponsorship. We've been able to uh, uh, raise some money to cover the costs. And so uh, from, uh, from all of us to all of you, car-based, first come, first serve, uh, and uh, we hope you uh, take advantage and enjoy. There are communities that are doing events. Uh, I think the town of East Fishkill is having its fireworks display, car-based. So keep an eye out. Uh, try to take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, and as we've always said uh, on these calls, please uh, be considerate and kind to one another. Um, I understand that we've gone through a, a long period of time, both the challenges of the disease and the human toll of the disease and the, and the business and the difficulty and challenges for businesses. Um, please be considerate. Please be patient. Um, please be kind. I, I know the desire uh, to, uh, uh, to offer an opinion. Um, you know, I, I think these days uh, the most effective thing we can do is to be considerate of one another. So um, be, be respectful of that. And uh, as we've said, uh, stay healthy, uh, be safe, and be kind to each other. Thanks very much.